to the fire! Destroy it! No. You see, dude? The battle was finally over. Sauron was defeated, and it seemed like the free people would finally be free from his evil. All Isildur had to do was to throw the ring in the fires of Mount Doom to destroy it forever. This crucial choice would decide the fate of Middle-earth. Should he destroy the ring, or should he keep it, and try to use its power for good? Now it's a pity that this choice wasn't really a fair one, for the ring had already started to influence Isildur, and he couldn't think clearly. He saw the ring as the one good thing that Sauron had ever created, and Isildur would never risk harming it, for it was already very precious to him. It's quite clear that, at this point, Isildur wasn't able to willingly destroy the ring, and so we've got to wonder, what if Elrond tried to convince him? Would he even manage? And if things were desperate, could Elrond have tried to take the ring by force to save Middle-earth's future? And if so, could Elrond even destroy it himself? So first of all, it's really important to clarify that this part of the books is very different from the movies. The movies make it seem like Isildur actually considered destroying the ring for a moment, since he followed Elrond into the heart of Mount Doom. While in the books, even though Elrond advised him to destroy the ring, Isildur never considered his advice. He saw the ring as a precious payment for the deaths of his father and brother, and something that he should treasure and protect. To quote Isildur, this I will have as a war guild for my father's death and my brother's. Was it not I that dealt the enemy his dead blow? And the ring that he held seemed to him exceedingly fair to look on, and he would not suffer it to be destroyed. Now at this point, Elrond was aware that the ring was crucial to Sauron's power, and he actually told the Sildor that the only way to prevent Sauron from ever returning was to destroy the One Ring. Unfortunately, it was impossible to change Isildur's mind, and so Elrond would have to face a very difficult choice. Should he try and take the ring by force, how would the men of Gondor react? Or was it less risky to allow Isildur to keep the One Ring? So the only way to take the ring was to attack Isildur, and if Elrond managed to overpower him, Isildur would either be dead or his mind would be broken. This is backed up by a conversation that Gandalf had with Frodo when they were discussing the destruction of the One Ring. To quote Gandalf, And I could not make you, except by force, which would break your mind. Now, if the Dúnedain saw their new king being driven to madness or slain by their elven allies, they would have surely seen this as a great betrayal, and these two factions would have probably gone to war with one another. In a way, this would have probably been one of the greatest things that could happen to Sauron, for the Elves and the Dúnedain were by far the biggest threat to his plans, and while they were busy fighting each other, they would have probably left Mordor unguarded, and this would make it so much easier for Sauron to return, and to simply overwhelm his enemies, who by now would have been severely weakened from many years of war. Taking the ring from Isildur just wasn't worth the risk, especially since Elrond had no guarantee that he was able to destroy it himself. And so perhaps the wisest plan was to let Isildur keep the ring and to maintain a very cautious watch over Mordor to stop Sauron from ever returning. This plan would limit the ring's evil, for as long as they managed to stop Sauron from regaining his strength, the ring could only act through Isildur and so it was definitely safer than risking Sauron's full return. It's also important to remember that Elrond was a wise, kind, and a good elf, and it wasn't in his nature to betray or to attack an ally. Throughout his life, he had experienced and heard many stories of evil actions that were driven by noble intentions, for after all, he was born in the First Age and this age was shaped by the Noldor Elves and their quest to recover the Silmarils, a quest that would drive them to commit many terrible acts of betrayal and violence, all in the name of overcoming the evils of Morgoth. 
Now, if we assume that for whatever reason Elrond felt that this risk was worth it, did he actually have any chance of destroying the ring? So in letter 191, from the Letters of Tolkien, Tolkien wrote that it was practically impossible for any incarnate creature to destroy the ring willingly, especially in Mount Doom, which was the point of its maximum power. To quote, But one must face the fact the power of evil in this world is not finally resistible by incarnate creatures, however good. In letter 192, he also wrote that there were few beings alive, if any, that could have possibly gone as far as Frodo did in his quest, and this also includes Elrond. There is also a very interesting connection between the influence of the ring and the way its ownership changed. It seems that when the ring is taken through violence, such as in the case of Gollum, it would have a much stronger hold over its new owner and cause more harm. While in the case of Bilbo, he managed to escape most of its effects because he started his ownership with pity and mercy by sparing Gollum. To quote Gandalf, Be sure that he took so little hurt from the evil and escaped in the end because he began his ownership of the ring so with pity. And so, in Elrond's case, if he took the ring from Isildur by force, it would actually have a stronger hold over him and consume his spirit faster. He would start to believe that he could use the ring's power for good, and so he would abandon all thoughts of destroying it. For the ring worked in such a way that the more powerful a person was, the harder it would be to resist the lure of the One Ring. In the hands of a powerful person, such as Elrond or Gandalf, the ring could corrupt them into a new Dark Lord. While in the hands of Isildur, even though he was still a great being, I imagine its effects would have been much more limited. This is why I believe that Elrond made the best choice possible when he allowed Isildur to keep the One Ring. For any other alternative, be it a fruitless war between the Dúnedain and the Elves, or Elrond becoming the new Ring Bearer, would have had a much worse effect on the future of the free people. Anyway guys, this wraps up today's video and I hope you enjoyed it. Do you agree with my thoughts on Elrond? And what do you think might have happened under Elrond's rule if he became the new Dark Lord? And also I suppose, what do you think Isildur might have done if he managed to survive and kept the One Ring? They're really awesome topics to discuss and I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. As always, I'd like to give a quick shout out to all my patrons that choose to support this channel. Your help and support make this channel possible, and I really appreciate it. Particularly my Valar tier patrons, Michelangelo and T. Gorman, and also my Wizard tier patrons, James Stodgill, Andrew Bomer, Mike Feeney, Roland Mervold, and Tamar Baines. If you like the work that we do on this channel and want to support us, Check out our Patreon page in the video description, where you can unlock some really cool perks. You can also support us by checking out our store, and by following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and joining our Discord server. All of these links can be found in the video description. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to join our fellowship today. Until next time friends, when we'll once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.